All right, so let's focus on arthritis in general, talk a little bit about why we're here, why joint replacement is such a huge endeavor, why it, it's so successful, and why it's necessary, and why it's probably going to continue to increase in necessity as we move forward. Arthritis, and a little bit of a difficult understanding with arthritis. Everybody talks about arthritis. Arthritis, in and of itself, by definition, is inflammation of the joint. That, however, the majority of people with problems, the actual term is called arthrosis, which is just wear and tear in the joint. It's all related to Latin, if any of you took that when you were kids in high school. But um, itis of anything is inflammation. Osis is refers to the degeneration, but what it comes down to is we've all kind of gotten used to saying we have arthritis, whether you have actual acute inflammation in your joint or not. Um, there's several different types, and it affects, as you can see, a ridiculous number of people. Um, and contrary to popular belief, this number goes from teen years to the triple digits. It is not always a disease of aging. It is not always a disease of the elderly. It is not always a disease of older people. Um, I've done knee and hip replacements in people in their 20s. I've done them in people that are 100. So it's you know from one end to the other. The two major types of arthritis, and we're going to talk mostly about osteoarthritis tonight. The other name that's familiar to most people is rheumatoid arthritis. The big difference in these two is, you know, they're similar in the fact that the joint wears out, the cartilage wears out. Osteoarthritis is plain old everyday garden variety wear and tear arthritis. Whether it's just due to time or whether it's due to previous trauma or for whatever reason, that is the most common type. It is probably 20-fold more common than rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory type of arthritis, and what I mean by that is the wear and tear and the destruction in the joint that, occur, that happens occurs not just from normal wear and tear, but from inflammation in the lining tissue of the joint, which then causes destruction of the cartilage and even destruction of the bone. Um, that is purely a genetic issue. It can be mild, but most cases that I see are severely deforming, much more so than plain old osteoarthritis. Uh, so if any of you here or if you have family members or friends, it tends to start in the hands as opposed to the more weight-bearing joints. And unlike osteoarthritis in the hands, which usually affects the distal joints, the rheumatoid arthritis tends to affect the proximal ones and can be very severely deforming to the point where it's very difficult to use fingers. And the same thing can happen in all the other joints. But most of us notice it primarily in the hands. Osteoarthritis, most common type, plain old wear and tear, 23 million Americans. Here's the scary part right here. We are all living longer. We are all active longer. We still, to this day, and probably in most of our lifetimes, will not come up with a way to stop the wear of the cartilage or improve cartilage's repairability of itself. And because of that, this right here is just going to continue to grow. This statement here, manageable, treatable, you'll notice one big thing missing. It is not a curable condition. In 2011, and probably in 2012, and in 2050, and 2100, at the turn of the next century, I would be, I, I will not be alive, but I, I would be hard pressed, and if I was a betting man, it'd be a pretty safe bet to say that there will probably still not be a cure for arthritis. There may be better manageability, there may be better treatability, I don't think there will be a cure. Okay, x-rays, why are they important? Here's what a good knee looks like, okay? Easiest way to think about this, here's the femur, the thigh bone we talked about, that shadow right there is the kneecap. 
Here's the tibia or shin bone. Everybody in all of our joints should have a fairly symmetrical joint space, okay? This diagram shows you why you have that joint space. That cartilage cushion that we talked about doesn't show up on plain x-rays, okay? So you should have a nice space. Um, old professor of mine told me that, you know, you need that space because that's the cushion you walk on, okay? So I use that phrase even though I stole it from him. Um, when you don't have it, this is what happens. No cartilage, okay, bone on bone, subsequent bone deformities over time because you get erosions in the joint. You get these extra little bony growth out here. Those are the bone spurs or osteophytes. Bone spurs. Bone spurs are not the problem any way, shape, or form unless they're sticking out so far they're poking through your skin. Okay? People come into the office all the time, oh, I got these bone spurs on my joint. Can you take them off so I'm all better? Not going to happen. All right? Bone spurs are not the problem. They are a symptom of the problem. Now, that being said, there are some places where shaving down bone spurs are helpful, like in the shoulder and things like that, if they're impinging on soft tissues and they're affecting the function of soft tissues. But in arthritis, they don't do anything, okay? Same thing, this is the hip joint, normal hip joint, nice little space between the edge of the ball and the socket. It's not as easy to see on the x-ray as it is on the knee, mainly because this ball is sitting within the socket. So the edge of the socket is way out here, okay? And there's a front edge and there's a back edge a little bit behind it. And the ball is sitting in that, but you can still see a little you know, space right here, especially up here, okay? This is the top of the acetabulum or the cup part of the hip joint. This is the top of the head of the femur there should be a space in there. When you're standing, you drive this ball up into that space. If you've got a good cushion there, that space is gonna stay, uh, stay in place. That's what a healthy hip joint looks like. This, on the other hand, is an arthritic hip. There is no joint space up there. There's a few little gaps, but that's because it's all irregular. The femoral head doesn't look like a circle anymore. It's a little bit misshapen. You've got some bone spurs down here and here, and this is grown out here. You've got a big bone spur up here, which is actually deepening the socket, but that just makes the problems worse. And that's why this hip, if you try and move that thing, it's not going to move. It's going to be rock solid, locked in there, and you know, you're going to have trouble putting your socks and shoes on and reaching down to the floor, and it's just not going to work. From a little bit of a diagram standpoint, again, you know, this is what happens. That cartilage deteriorates. You get all these pits and cracks. Sometimes you just, it goes away. You get bare bone in there. You get a lot of extra bone build up here and here. Thickening of all the other soft tissues around it. Again, abnormal bone formation is what leads to spurs. When the cartilage cushion protects the bone. When you lose that cartilage, bone sees more stress. Bone is a phenomenal tissue. Those of you who are dealing or have dealt with osteoporosis, one of the things that your physicians should be encouraging to you to do is some type of weight-bearing exercise. The reason for that is weight-bearing and stimulating the bone helps more bone grow. Bone, unlike cartilage, is a great tissue. It, it, it'll grow like crazy in the right setting. That's why broken bones heal, fractures heal. And they do from the time you're born to the time you die. Aging doesn't affect fracture healing. Okay? People ask me all the time when they come in and they, you know, 85 years old, a woman fell and has a, has a broken arm, you know, how long is it going to take to heal? Six to eight weeks. 20 year old with the same broken arm, how long is it going to heal? Six to eight weeks. The only difference? Young kids whose bones are still growing because they're already in the process of growing, so they can rev it up a little bit faster. They tend to heal a little bit faster. But once you reach adulthood and you stop growing, for the most part, bone heals at the same rate in everybody. Most of the time in older people, when they have a bone healing problem, it's because they have some other medical problem that affects the way the bone heals. It's not just because you're old and you broke the bone. In a strictly normal setting, it'll heal just fine. But bone responds to stress by forming more bone. 
And that's why in the osteoporosis setting or osteopenia, we ask people to do some type of weight-bearing exercise because that builds up the strength in the bone. When you lose the cushion and the bone's seeing more stress, it's going to produce more bone. So part of, you know, these x-rays, just looking at, you know, there's more bone here. The bone's more dense here than it is here. And that's because the cartilage covering isn't protecting it anymore, so it doesn't have the same cushion, so it starts to produce more bone. It does that within the structure of the bone so that the, the, the bony integrity or the bony scaffolding gets thicker, and it does it around the edges. And that's what causes the bone spurs. It's kind of haphazard bone growth in places that you don't really need it. 